So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are finally back. Yes, I know it has been a while. It's been like, what, 10 plus days since we've had a video. And for those of you who are not aware why there have not been any videos, it's very simple. My computer is old and it just completely finally crapped itself on me, meaning I have a new one. We are fresh, we are back, and I am very much excited to get back into some rebuilds. So today we are back in the LeBron era. We are slowly winding down all of these rebuilds. We're going to go ahead and actually rebuild the Utah Jazz today. Funny enough, I actually recorded this rebuild on my old computer and I was going to post it and then my computer basically just died on me. So it's my second time doing this. It has been a while. This Utah Jazz team won 39 games in real life. Traded Darren Williams to the Brooklyn Nets and kind of kicked off a little bit of a rebuild. So, you know, I don't know exactly what direction we're going to go with this team today, but I have done this. I know what works. I know it doesn't. And finally, a couple things. As always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comments section. Of course, I'm always looking for ideas, literally. So whatever you guys want to see, make sure you let me know down below. Uh, and then second, more importantly, uh, just stick with me on this. You know, this is a brand new computer. It took me four or five hours to set this thing up by itself. I know there are going to be some bumps in the road. I don't know how the quality here looks. I hope it's better than what it used to be. I hope the video sounds perfectly fine. But if there's something wrong, just hang with me. I promise you I will eventually fix it once we kind of get into this. So this is all new to me as it is obviously not really that new to you, but my end it is at least. So yeah, man, hopefully it looks a little bit better. If not, if something's wrong, let me know down below in the comment section. I'll probably already figure it out though. So really just want to say thank you to you guys for understanding this like little 10-ish day break that we uh, didn't want to take, but ended up taking anyway. So super excited about this one. My apologies for the long intro. Let's get into it. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this Utah Jazz team. As I kind of mentioned in the intro, along with 58,000 other things, this Jazz team did make a big trade during this season. Near the deadline, they traded away their best player in Darren Williams and ended up not making the playoffs and kind of going into a little bit of a rebuild. So talking about this roster, Darren Williams is an 87 overall. He's only 26, and he's on a relatively nice contract. I don't have to trade him. Now, will I? I don't know. That's still up in the air. Big factor is going to be how this first season goes. Now, if he was expiring, maybe I pulled the trigger on a trade before we even kick off year one. But for now, I like Darren Williams. He's probably one of the better point guards in the game right now. So we'll keep him. Uh, Earl Watson, probably not going to be a long-term option at, you know, 31, 72 overall, one-year deal. So we'll see. Um, and then I'm sure many of you are aware, I'm sure many of you remember, uh, when 2K doesn't have the rights to certain players, they just fill it out with auto-generated CPUs who aren't even real. Uh, Raja Bell's 34, very nice contract, unfortunately with the overall and the age, just probably not a viable kind of shooting guard for us throughout three years of this rebuild, so we'll see. Uh, Walt Moore and then Greg Higgins, who is making way too much money. God bless 2K. Small forward spot, I almost choked a little bit. Yes, it is Gordon Hayward's rookie campaign. Now, I will let you know right now, and uh, I don't know what Hayward's future is going to be because I kept him the entirety of the last time I recorded this, and he just sucked. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it. He was not good through the first three seasons. Now, I understand, obviously, only three seasons into a guy's career. You can't expect him to be prime LeBron, but in only three years of this rebuild, i got to have something there. So if he plays well, he'll stay. If not, goodbye. Ime Udoka, head coach of the Houston Rockets. I loved Ime when he was with my Celtics for that one year. But, you know, for one season, it's not bad depth, um, you know, at 30. 32 and a 72 probably not going to work for too long uh power forward spots interesting we got paul Millsap here we have andre karolinko who is an expiring contract he's 29 years old and an 81 overall wouldn't be surprised if i thought of a possibility to maybe move him before we even kick off year one now mostly because of the depth Millsap's younger he's better more years on the deal i think it makes a little bit more sense uh and then the center spot uh francisco elson i'm not going to pretend i know a lot about him but again decent depth uh, Frankie Singletary making way too much goddamn money. And then Jeremy Carr here, whoever the hell you are. I have a question for you guys. As I'm sure, you know, you're all very privy to at this point. Uh, when 2K puts in these auto-generated players, you know, like Frankie Singletary here, do you guys care if I trim down the contracts? Because it's just ultimately a ginormous pain in the ass for me in 2010, 2011, by the way, to have to move $42 million for a guy who's not even a 70 overall. I feel like I probably could and you guys wouldn't care, but I just wanted to ask your opinion. Let me know down below in the comment section. It's such bullshit that 2K does this in the first place. Let's get into some trades. Our first trade of today's video is going to come to the Cleveland Cavaliers, and this is what it is going to be. Andre Karolinko, who, as I mentioned, was an expiring contract, really just a depth piece for us, even though he's a relatively talented player, just didn't really need him here. So we're sending him to Cleveland along with Walt Moore and our 2015 first-round pick for Antoine Jamison and Anderson Varejo. Now, I will let you guys know up front, Antoine Jamison is immediately going to be traded right after this. I'm doing this trade to have a somewhat comparable... 
I don't even want to say the word competent, but that's what it feels like in Anderson Varejao. He's not a game-changing center, but he's much better than what we have right now. He's on a multi-year deal, a very nice deal at that. So I don't love giving up draft picks before year one kicks off, but for this, it feels like a relatively solid kind of first trade here. Our next trade and possibly our final trade before we kick off year one is going to come with the Detroit Pistons and Antoine Jamison has found a new home. It was a very short stay for him here with us in Utah, but yeah, really just didn't need him as I mentioned. So we're sending him to Detroit along with Nate Elmore and a 2014 second round pick for Rip Hamilton and Jason Maxiel. Maxiel is going to go ahead and be the backup behind Paul Millsap at the power forward spot. And then Rip Hamilton, I fully understand he's 32 years old, but he's on a multi-year contract. He's much better than Raja Bell who is our starting shooting guard option currently. And I like Rep Hamilton. He's not a guy I get a lot. So he may only be here for a year, but multiple years upgrade at the shooting guard spot feels like a pretty good deal. So looking at the team and the depth we have right now, Williams and Watson, one, two. We have Hamilton and Bell, Hayward and Udoka. We have Millsap, Maxiel, and then Varejao and Elson. So um, something also to keep in mind, I went ahead and checked. We actually do not have our first round pick this year. It is lottery protected, owned by the Minnesota Timberwolves. I am going to go out on a limb and make an assumption that is from the Al Jefferson trade. Of course, we don't have Al Jefferson here because 2K doesn't have his rights. God bless you, 2K. So, yeah, we obviously don't have our first round pick, which sucks, but I'm not going to take it back just because 2K sucks. So, I think at this point, we're pretty much all set. Um, I, I don't really see a way to get any sort of value for anybody really here. I mean, if any, no, there's nothing there. So, I think at this point, we just kind of hang on to everybody. I'll do one check with Vinny Howard. Like, if anybody wants to be stupid and give me a draft pick, I'll more than take it, but... Don't think it's going to be happening. Let's set the rotation. After a couple of relatively big trades, we've gone ahead and finalized the rotation for year one here in Utah. Now, I was kind of thinking about the approach I wanted to take with this rebuild, kind of heading into year one. And there are really two different paths we could have taken. I think standing pat with the team we had was never really an option. And that's mostly because we don't have our first round pick. We decided to go with the path that hopefully ends us competing in the Western Conference. It's a very good West. We're probably not going to be up there with the top tier teams. Well, we're putting our best foot forward. We are really going to try to be a playoff team and a good one at that. Or we could have obviously gone ahead and just kind of completely blown it up. We could have tanked, gotten our draft pick back, and went from there. But you know what? I want to have some fun today. We've put together a really good kind of starting team here. I think we could be good. So, Darren Williams, Rip Hamilton, Gordon Hayward, Paul Millsap, Anderson Varejao is your one through five. The bench sucks. There's no sugarcoating it. It's definitely something I'll be focusing on this offseason. Raja Bell going to be my sixth man here. you got Jason Maxiel behind him, Earl Watson, Francisco Elson, and Ime Udoka rounding out this starting five actually this bench unit so yeah it's uh it's not a great bench it's probably going to hurt us but i like the starting five a lot i think this group really kind of fits well together also so i'm excited i am hoping it is a really good first season here in utah see you guys at the end of it all right so our first season is officially over we won 48 games which is honestly more than i think this team would have won if we didn't make any moves whatsoever so as i kind of suspected going into this season you know we're not up there with you know the lakers of the world the spurs the thunder all those really good west Western Conference teams, we should be in the mix for a playoff spot. LeBron James, first year in Miami, takes home an MVP. Blake Griffin, Mono Ginobili, God, I take 10 days off. I forgot these awards are always the same here in year one. So let's just check it out. We are a six seed. You can see it right there. We have Dallas, the team that actually won it all this year. In real life, we'll take a look at some numbers on the season, see how everybody played. Williams, Hamilton was really good. I'll take that, especially out of a guy who's 33 years old. I don't want to say the best years are behind them because they're clearly not statistically, but I'll take it. Millsap really saw a third option. Gordon Hayward rookie campaign. It's all right. Um, again, I'll let you guys know just because I've done this and I remember from you know, 10, 12 days ago. Uh, he maxes out at like 13 points a game. And as I went over earlier, I understand he's only going to be a third-year player by the time this video ends. He's just going to have to make my decision. Uh, a little bit more challenging. Uh, Verjao, not there necessarily in the points. Good job on the board. About 47% from the field. I can live with it overall. We know we knew he wasn't a game-changing center. He did lead us in rebounds and assists was Darren Williams. So uh, we'll take a look at the full standings real quick just to kind of see where everybody kind of fell into place. We are the sixth seed. As I mentioned, we do have the Dallas Mavericks in round one, which is going to be not an easy matchup, if I'm going to say so myself. We actually tied with the Spurs. Wow. That's surprising. Here's a look at the East. Okay, let's get into it. Let's take a look at this Mavericks team. A lot of talent here. Some older guys like Jason Kidd, Jason Terry. You got Sean Marion, Dirk, Tyson Chandler, Berea, Karan Butler, Deshaun Stevenson. I mean, they are one deep team. That goes without being said. So drop the first two, drop the first three, and we get swept. We get absolutely packed by the Dallas Mavericks, and that is the end of the road here for year one for us. And it is a Mavericks and Bulls finals, and Dirk goes on to win finals MVP in 2011, just like he did in real life. So, you know, I guess we can say we lost to the eventual champs. It still doesn't feel good, but it's a little bit of something 
to uh, to work upon. It definitely is. So we're not going to have our first round pick. Obviously, our first round picks owned by the Minnesota Timberwolves, as I mentioned. And uh, I think we're just going to have to make moves kind of from within this offseason if we want to go ahead and you know make some big trades, whatever it may be. But there's not going to be like a home run signing or anything like that, at least that I'm forecasting. Uh, here's a look at the lottery. I don't know. Bucks, Cavs, Warriors, Kings, and Raptors. Uh, staff signing. Jerry Sloan's our head coach, correct? Yeah, those ratings are just... They're not good. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. I mean, there's a potential there a little bit, but look at that guy. Does he look like he's getting any better at anything anytime soon? Maybe besides sitting in a chair? Yeah, not going to happen. Goodbye, Jerry. It was a good season. It is not going to be another good one for you. So, Mr. Stauffer, I need you today, man. I do. I need you, Mike. Thank you. Perfect ratings, obviously. They did not mean to do that. I don't think we have any of the first or even seconds, maybe. I just want to check just to confirm. We do not. I could trade into the draft. Maybe could get somebody that would help boost our bench, but... I just don't know, like, what does, like, the 16th overall pick go for? Like, the 17th or just 16th overall pick from the Pacers. They want a future first in 2012. They'll give me Raja Bell, but I have to give up a first as well. Oh, man. Yeah, no matter what I do, like, if I'm going to sit at, like, 16 or something, just somewhere where I'm going to be able to get some sort of remote value, but I feel like I can still get some. Like, if I go to, like, 19, what is it? Ooh. Now, this is something I might do. Not only because we get like the 19th pick, which we could probably get a you know relatively serviceable bench player, but we're also getting a future first in 2015. And we get rid of Rajah Bell, who I was probably going to trade anyways. You know what? Fuck it. Let's go ahead and pull the trigger on this trade. Let's do this. We now have a first round pick this year at number 19. I see a guy like Tobias Harris sitting here immediately kind of just jumps out at me. Bismack Biombo, Derek Sloan, Alec Burks, Markeith Morris. I think out of all these guys, Tobias Harris ended up having the best career. So you know what? Tobias Harris... Welcome to Utah. Excited to have you here, man. He's going to be a 76 overall. We replaced the exact overall of Raja Bell and add a draft pick. I mean, just a home run deal for us. Uh, Jeremy Carr, no thank you, not at that price tag. And uh, we're not going to have money. I know that for a fact. It's a little bit unfortunate. It's just kind of the reality of the team we have built together right now. So, no. Let's get into some trades. I'm making a big trade right now with the Golden State Warriors. And yes, I understand on paper this might not look like the best deal in the world, but... Speaking from experience, because I have done this in a three-year rebuild, Gordon Hayward is not going to reach anything close to his full potential. It's unfortunate, just the way it is. And for those who are saying, well, why is it only a three-year rebuild? Because we are waiting. I'm getting into five-year and ten-year rebuilds. In the future, I promise you, just for now, we're sticking at three, and Gordon Hayward's not going to hit that potential. So Monte Ellis is going to come in, take over as our starting shooting guard. We also do get another draft pick, which feels really, really good. And uh, I'm excited to have it. So ultimately, Monte Ellis, yes, is going to be my shooting guard moving forward. Which leaves an option for Rip Hamilton. Could I trade him? Yes. Could I keep him? Maybe play him at the three? Also a possibility. I'm not going to force something and completely overpay for an upgrade at the shooting guard spot. Or excuse me, small forward spot. But ultimately, Rip Hamilton's 33. Just had a fantastic season for us. But is it really going to get better? I don't know. So I'm not going to hold my breath on anything. But I really am happy with the trade we just made. And I'm going to try to finally make another. We have found that next trade, and it's going to come with the New York Knicks, Rip Hamilton, Jason Maxiel, and two future seconds heading to New York for Danilo Gallinari and Ronnie Turioff. Now, I understand that on paper, the trade, it's just, it is what it is. It's not anything fantastic. It's a decent deal, but what we are doing here is we're getting 11 years younger. We're getting about $8 million cheaper, and Danilo Gallinari's numbers are not quite on par with Rip Hamilton, but you know who they are on par with? Yeah, that'd be Gordon Hayward. So I'm making this deal. Rip Hamilton was a super nice piece for us. But if I had to take a guess, because I know how this game works, he'll probably be about a 79 overall to start next year. And that's not going to go up. That's only going to go down. Gallo's 22. He's the same overall as Rip. And we get Ronnie Terry off in this deal while not giving up a first round pick. So ultimately, a trade I am excited about. I think Gallo is going to help this team quite a bit. And uh, now we have a couple other decisions. I mean, Terry off's a really kind of solid depth backup center piece behind Verjao. I think going forward at this point, for this offseason anyways, it's really just going to be about filling out the rest of this bench format. I want to make upgrades. I want to get rid of Frankie fucking Singletary. That's what I really want to do. Wow, god damn it. I love I love when this game does shit like this. Um, all right, so we have nobody on this team anymore that I don't really need, like no auto-generated CPU players. So we get to fill out the bench one through three. We definitely just cleared up some money, which is, of course, very nice. So just looking at my options here off the bench. Oh, man. Everybody's just so fucking old. It's really kind of weird. Who is this? Eric Matthews. 
interesting. Um, all right, let's go ahead and just look at some other options here. Shannon Brown wouldn't be the worst option as a backup shooting guard off the bench. Can definitely provide some scoring. Um, and then I think we're going to make one more, like, kind of relatively notable signing. And then after that, we're probably, oh, wait, no, never mind. We're not, Earl Boinkins is 39. God damn. All right. It's a Luther head video. <laughs> it's a Luther head video. It'll be the backup point guard. Then the backup small forward. Anthony Parker is 36, but he is 6'6". Sure, why not, Anthony Parker? Come on down for a year. You'll be my backup small forward. All right, we've improved the bench. I think long-term especially, maybe even this year, I think we've improved the starting five as well. So I am excited. I will see you guys at the start of year number two. We made a decent amount of moves this offseason. We kind of completely revamped this bench unit. We have a few new starters on this team, and I'm really excited about the possibilities here with this Jazz group heading in to year number two. So Darren Williams, 88 overall. He is still absolutely fantastic. He's our best player. Monte Ellis obviously went ahead and made a big trade for, swung big, hoping to hit a home run. We will find out. Danil Gallinari replaces Gordon Hayward. Still got Paul Mills, Sapp, and Anderson Vergeau as our front court. The bench unit, significant upgrades. Shannon Brown, our new sixth man. You got Tobias Harris getting 18 minutes a game behind him. Him. Ronnie Turioff, our backup center. You got Anthony Parker, who we signed as a nice veteran, small forward presence as our ninth man. And then Luther Head. What's a 2K rebuild in LeBron era without Mr. Luther Head? All right, man. This is the team. Um, again, I don't know if we're up there talent wise with some of the best of the best, but we are going to fight like hell and hopefully have a better second season. I'll see you guys at the end of it. Here in year two, we improve by four games. This year we win 52, we lose 30. Ultimately, it's not that bad in a very good Western Conference, but the real kind of telltale, the tell all, if you will. It's going to be the playoff success we have, or don't. So hopefully we do. Derek Rose wins an MVP award. Kyrie Irving actually ended up in Cleveland, funny enough. Is he wearing number 13? That looks strange as hell. Uh, Mo Will, six man. Oh, wow. I didn't even look at how good those numbers were. Mo Williams, six man of the year right behind Kyrie. You got Dwight Howard winning deep poise. AC Law, most improved. Thibs is your coach of the year. Derek Rose won an MVP. Thibs wins coach of the year. Surprise, surprise. We are a five seed. Oh, it's because of the stupid. Oh, my God. I hate how this shit works. First and foremost, let's check out the numbers. Monte Ellis was fantastic. Darren Williams took a little bit of a dip in the scoring department. The assists are still there. We also added other talent that's able to score the basketball, so I'm not tremendously worried or anything like that. We'll figure it out. Rebounds, Verge out, and assist was Williams. So let's look at the standings. I just want to see. So, yeah, we are 52 and 30. It's the stupid division thing, isn't it? That's exactly what it is. Because we would have been a four seed, but because Dallas won their division, they win 48 games, they take the three seed. I guess. Um, all right, let's just go ahead and get into it. Uh, we are taking on the... Wait, did I say six before? I don't know what I said. Portland Trailblazers, Dylan, Bonner, Brandon Roy, Nickel Batum, Aldridge, Odin, West Matthews. They're good. I've done the Trailblazers rebuild before. I think we're better. I do. So we are up 2-1 at this point in time. We go up 3-1. They force game six, and we do, oh my god, the eight-seeded Spurs beat the one-seeded Thunder. Now, I'm not saying I want the Spurs, because they're still very good, even if they're a little bit older. But, oh my god, that Thunder team's impossible to beat. So, if we're going to win, it's going to be now. Yao Ming and Tim Duncan in the same front court is insane. I don't care if one's old, one's broken down. That's nuts. The rest of the team obviously got Tony and Manu. So, they, they definitely scare me. There's there's no kind of way around that. We are up 3-0, though. Okay. We're moving on here. Western Conference Finals. You got us, Kobe, Powell, Rip Hamilton. Did I trade him to the Lakers? No, I traded him to the Warriors, didn't I? Well, he's a 78 overall. I guess I made the right decision. He's still playing relatively well, but I'll take Monte Ellis any day of the week. Okay, let's get into it. We win game one, lose game two, lose three, lose four. Oh, we got gentlemen swept. Kobe is just... Seven game series between Derrick Rose and the Bulls and Kobe and the Lakers. That would have been insane. All right. I'm not exactly sure what the kind of idea with what we want to do with this offseason is because, you know, in one part of me is like, oh, you're good enough. You're right there. You just, you know, you kind of got a little bit ahead of yourselves, maybe advanced another round that you probably shouldn't have won. And that's what we got. So, you know, obviously heading into this final year, we have to make sure everything's perfect. And uh, if another trade is coming that's required, I'll obviously do that. But I'm not going to force anything not anything too stupid anyway. So 24th overall pick. I don't know. We'll see who's here. I don't know. That's to be somebody good. Festus Azili could be a nice backup center replacement option. Yeah, looking at everybody else here. Festus Azili is going to be my guy. So welcome to the team. Excited to have him here. He's a 73 overall. We look at team player. Darren Williams declined. So he'll be entering unrestricted free agency. Gallo enters restricted free agency. And uh, I just got to make sure I pay him. Do I not have rights on either of them? Is that is that how we're playing it today, 2K? Okay. 
Well, I'm going to pay Darren Williams, who actually does have an offer. It's not a real offer, so let's just pay Darren. And then I have to wait for Gallo. I'm just What I'm going to do is just not renounce Danilo Gallinari. Tariyov can go. We probably just gone ahead and drafted his replacement. So um, Darren Williams is back, which is obviously very important. I'm going to wait on Gallo. And uh, yeah, I mean, do we have any other money? I could just pay him if I wanted to. I could also sign like some of these other guys. I'm just going to have to renounce Gallo if I do that. So that doesn't probably make the most sense in the world. So I'm just going to pay Gallo. Hopefully he accepts it and then we can kind of just call it a day. So there we go. Let's get into some trades. Okay, we just made a very big trade with the Chicago Bulls. Made an upgrade at our center spot here with Mr. Joakim Noah. He's an upgrade in terms of overall. I know the numbers aren't like fantastic. Like they're not prime Dwight Howard numbers, but ultimately this is an improvement in overall. It's an improvement defensively. I'm very excited to have Joakim Noah here. He's just the center on a championship caliber team or championship winning team, I should say. Um, so at this point, I think I'm just going to fill out the rest of the bench um, in terms of what options we could have here. Like Michael Petra is probably not going to do it. Uh, I need point guard and small forward, correct? Yes, I do. So let's just see. I guess Gerald Henderson is a decent enough backup point guard option for the final season. And then, oh boy, um, I'm going to be in complete douchebag and I'm going to sign Kirk Heinrich and then trade Kirk Heinrich. Sue me. Okay, let's, son of a bitch, that's not what I'm clicking. Uh, Heinrich and two draft picks because, again, we have them. Can't take them with us. Ooh, actually, Jeff Teague wouldn't be. You know what? Actually, you're all going to hate me. I'm going to trade for Jeff Teague and then I'm going to trade Henderson, who we, of course, we just signed. I know. I don't like it either, but it's what we got to do. Uh, I need a small forward. Please, somebody, anybody. Small forward. Somebody, our power forward works too, actually, because I can just move Tobias Harris. Oh, man. Trevor Booker, honestly, not the worst option in the world. I do see Mo Spates here. I like Mo Spates a lot. Okay, we're going to go ahead and make that trade. And then, actually, maybe I go ahead, because we just got Spates. If I do Craig Smith in Festus Azili, I can probably get an upgrade. Really? Nothing? I don't know. Um, I see Perkins there. I don't love the idea of Kendrick Perkins. Could you go ahead and add Bismack Biombo to this team? Wouldn't be the worst option in the world. Chuck Hayes is 29. He is only 6'6". Yeah, he's probably not going to be a viable center option. I mean, he does put up 11 boards a game. Fuck it. We're going to trade for Chuck Hayes. What does Chuck Hayes' overall do at the center spot? It probably goes down significantly. No, it actually stays the same. All right, a 6'6 backup center, but it is an upgrade nonetheless. Um, I have to move around some other positions. I'll see you guys at the start of year number three. We are here at the start of the third and final regular season in Utah. This offseason was very, very important for us. We upgraded the bench significantly. We got a very big upgrade at our starting center spot. And I like it. I think this team can do it. I really do. So, Darren Williams, Monte Ellis, Danilo Gallinari, Paul Millsap remain one through four. New addition here in Joakim Noah. Bench unit still going to be led by Shannon Brown. We picked up Chuck Hayes to be my backup center. Tobias Harris is developing nicely. He's actually the backup small forward spot. Jeff Teague was brought in as the backup point guard. Then Bo Spates, our backup power forward. So I like it. We've significantly improved the bench. The starting five is looking really good. Fantastic head coach here in Mr. Mike Stauffer. So... I don't know, man. It's, it's all or all or nothing at this point. I'll see you guys at the end of the final regular season. By far our best regular season yet at 64 and 18. If this is not a championship season, I do not know what is. Well, obviously, last season we had some relative playoff success. We need a lot more this year. Derrick Rose coming off a finals MVP. Wins a regular season MVP again. I know he won it last year, too. Anthony Davis is a Toronto Raptor. He's your rookie of the year. Steve Nash in Golden State has to be 40 at this point. The man's 39. God damn, he's sixth man of the year backing up Steph Curry. Greg Oden, deep boy. I love it. I love to see it, man. Greg Oden, such a what if, man. Injuries completely suck, and they ruin this man's career. I, I, I still have a feeling he would have been very, very good if it wasn't for the injuries. Jeremy Lin, most improved. Scott, oh my God. I thought for sure we were going to be the one seed here. We're not. We are, we are not the one seed. We're the four seed because we're in the same fucking division as the Thunder. Oh, my God. These stupid fucking rules. 2K. There's, uh, this is why they abolished this rule because it's so goddamn stupid. I understand they want divisions or wanted at this time to relatively mean something. And, of course, now they really still don't. But there's no reason that I win 64 games. I should be a four seed. There's in a 51 seed or 51 win teams ahead of me. There's just no logical reason for that. So uh, I'm very happy that the NBA got rid of that. It's stupid. I imagine every single fan base on the planet hated it. I was a child when those were rules, so I don't really remember them too much. But yeah, man, it's just sad to see. Here are the numbers across the board. Obviously, we have a little bit more of a battle coming into these playoffs than we initially anticipated. We have the defending Western Conference championship or champions here with Kobe and Powell and the rest of the Lakers, who are still very, very good. So, you know, I do not anticipate an easy first round whatsoever, but at the end of the day, we won 64 games for a reason. We go up 3-0. 
All right, little revenge there. I'll take it. Now comes a real battle, a battle that I was hoping I wouldn't have to see until at least the Western Conference Finals. It's coming early, but if you want to win it all, you have to beat good teams anyways. Let's just get out of the way, man. Are we going to be able to beat the Thunder here? Okay, wow. Okay, don't do this. Too. Oh, my God. We go up 3-0, they fight back, force game six, and we win in six. I was not expecting that. It is us and the Golden State Warriors here in the West Finals. Steph Curry, Ray Elm, are you fucking kidding me? And Hayward now here? I know Hayward's overall is higher than Gallo, and, but look at the numbers. They're not much different. Um, Man. I can't imagine. Like It's like a, it's like a, a different universe version of the Splash Brothers. All right, man. Let's see what happens here in the West Finals. We are 1-1 with Golden State. We go up 2-1, up 3-1. We're in the finals. We're in the finals, and we have the Wizards? John Wall, Nick Young? I mean, yeah, but, like, no. I really... Okay. We're not doing this with the Wizards, right? I would have to imagine that a Wizards versus Jazz final... Oh, shit. I forgot. Gameplay. Fuck. I'm sorry. I'll get it next time. I was going to say, I have to... No disrespect. I would have to imagine that a Wizards versus Jazz finals would probably be, like, the lowest-watched finals of all time. Unless MJ was with the Wizards at the time. I'm just saying. Uh, Darren Williams, finals MVP. We were very, very, very close to uh, not getting a championship. But, of course, we end up winning one anyways. This team was fun. It was a much different team than what I put together in the first time I tried to record this. Of course, second time went much better. I knew it worked. I knew it didn't work. And I'm sure people still are going to criticize. But that is what it is. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I'm happy to be back. Um, we're going to try to do the same schedule we were before, you know, Monday through Friday. And uh, for those of you who are asking for, you know, five, seven, ten-year rebuilds, they're coming. It's just going to be a little bit more into summertime when I get a little bit more free time, if you will. So, yeah, of course, big thank you to all of you for kind of sticking with me throughout the little break that I didn't wanted, want to take throughout these past 10, 12 days. But uh, happy to be back. Of course, if there's anything, like, majorly wrong with this video that you can tell that maybe you don't think I'll notice, let me know down below in the comment section. There's something big i'll obviously fix it moving forward but yeah big thank you to all of you i hope the quality is better as well i'm gonna do any other video ideas down below in the comment section as always thanks so much for watching i love you guys i'll catch you guys all in the next one